So it's been a year since Apple announced their M1 MacBook computers. And now they've announced the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. I've had this M1 MacBook Pro for a year now. Is it still worth buying? Let's find out. So M1 launched Apple years ahead of the competition and it left Intel and PC manufacturers scrambling as to what to do next. Now since ramming the M1 in the MacBook Pro, MacBook Air and Mac Mini, Apple have also made a new 24 inch iMac with M1 and stuffed the M1 into the iPad Pro. But now Apple have made an M1 Pro and an M1 Max processor and they are sticking those in the new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro. So with all of this choice, what do you pick? Because today we're completely reimagining MacBook Pro and it starts with the first Pro chip designed for the Mac. I was having a conversation with my dad the other day and he was under the impression that Apple have stopped making the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Well they haven't, but it did get me thinking, is the 13 inch MacBook Pro pointless now? Hear me out, I love this computer. I've had it coming up to a year now and it has transformed the way that I work. The speed and capability of this thing is absolutely outrageous and the price is affordable too. I have the entry level model and I am well happy with it. But now looking at the other options that Apple have made available, I'm not sure that I would buy this again. And I believe the model down and the model up are enough choice for you. Here is why. First of all, let's look at the prices. The cheapest laptop option is the MacBook Air, available in two options, an M1, with eight CPU cores, seven GPU cores, and a 256 gigabytes SSD for 999 pounds. Or you can get an option with an extra GPU core and a 512 gigabyte SSD for 1249. And to make it clear, this laptop is almost identical to my laptop. My MacBook Pro has the extra GPU core that the more expensive MacBook Air has, but only has the 256 gigabyte storage of the entry level. So is one GPU core the only difference? No, my MacBook Pro boasts 20 hours of battery life compared to 18 hours. It has a touch bar, which I really like, but not everyone does. HDR sound, 500 nits brightness compared to 400 nits, a slightly better built-in mic, and fans that should allow for better cooling for sustained high power tasks. Now in the year that I've had this laptop, I don't think I've ever heard the fans on it wearing up, even when rendering 4K video and exporting videos from a channel. So if you're not too bothered about these differences, you could save yourself 300 quid. And I'll be honest, if I was to buy a laptop again, I would buy the MacBook Air. Well, I would have. The next model up, the MacBook Pro 14 inch, its entry level has an 8 core CPU, 14 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory and a 512 gigabyte hard drive. This costing 18.99, 600 more than the 13 inch. This also comes with some differences to consider. The battery life drops to 17 hours, you lose the touch bar and go back to function keys, but it also does give you a media engine helping to encode and decode ProRes better. You get a 1080p FaceTime camera, a better hi-fi sound system that has Dolby Atmos. They also have spatial audio with dynamic head tracking when using the AirPods 3rd Gen, Pro and Max. You get an extra Thunderbolt 4 USB-C port, a HDMI port, and an SDXC port. In my opinion, what that model is, well, it's just more pro. From being a regular user of the M1 and then seeing all of the comparative benchmarks for the M1 Pro, the M1 Pro is insane. And I haven't even got onto the M1 Max, but hang on, hang on. Rewind a minute. Do you remember when the M1 first came out? and everyone was losing their mind of the capability of this little chip. Well, it hasn't changed. The M1 is still unbelievably good. But this is the thing, and I need to clear it up. It does have its limitations. When the M1 first came out, 
it was almost like everyone was so hyped up on it that people thought it was the best computer that had ever been released. It was the fastest, the most capable. And don't get me wrong, it is unbelievably good, but it still has its limitations. I'm not a laptop tester or a benchmarker. So this is just my experience as an everyday user and a video editor. So in everyday use, this thing has no issues at all. Opening programs, running 20 of them at the same time, doing the rounds online, watching video, making spreadsheets, not a problem at all. But on occasion, when I was video editing, I did run into some hurdles, small hurdles. So when on Final Cut and I was creating layered effects and putting in loads and loads of effects, loads and loads of transitions and stuff, my MacBook Pro really struggled. It started running and playing really choppy, really struggling to handle it and eventually it just kicked out. Wouldn't let me play it at all. Every time I played it, Final Cut would crash. And also one of the things I would love to do is to create my thumbnails while my videos are exporting. But if I'm exporting a video that's 4K, Photoshop runs like a fat kid on track day. Weirdly, exporting at 1080p is fine, no problems at all. But what is the line? When should you upgrade to the M1 Pro? Well, if you are just an everyday user, get the MacBook Air. It is more than fast enough to handle everyday uses, and it will also be powerful enough to handle those harder tasks if you decide to throw them at it. Now, for semi-pros, it comes down to your budget. What I would say is that I would get the MacBook Air over the MacBook Pro 13 inch. I mean, capability wise, they are so similar. And then if I could stretch my budget, I would then jump up to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I honestly wouldn't bother at all with the 13 inch. If I wanted to upgrade the MacBook Air slightly, I might do that, paying 200 pound to double the RAM or going for the slightly more expensive MacBook Air option to get more storage space. But the eight gigabytes of unified memory still work pretty well. But the thing is, if you then jump up to the 14 inch MacBook Pro, it brings with it such a massive performance boost that you could pretty much throw anything at it. Now for all out professionals, so if you need a laptop that reliably will be able to handle all that you throw at it, you should get at least the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook. And then beyond that, well, probably would need to do another video because there are still more options going up. But if you need the power and the reliability to handle as much as you can throw at it, I wouldn't drop down to any of the 13 inch MacBooks. And that's not to say that they wouldn't be brilliant, but the M1 Pro is gonna give you more than enough performance and more than enough is better than not quite enough. Click on this video here, see another video that YouTube thinks you'll like.